the past, the connections on a PCB could be considered as ideal connection. When a signal state was changing at one end of the line, it was immediately seen on the other end. There was no delay. This does no longer apply to today's PCB, where circuits operate at much higher frequencies. The PCB track acts as a transmission line with its own characteristics. A transmission line can be represented by a cascade of LC elements and additional parasitics for R and G. Such a structure has a characteristic impedance and is calculated by the formula square root of L over C. This impedance is an AC property of the line. In other words, it only applies to time varying signals, voltage as function of time. The value is equal the voltage divided by the current at any point and is constant. If one of the ends is not terminated with the characteristic impedance, reflections will occur. Reflections are discussed in one of the next sessions. In terms of DC, the characteristic impedance has no impact. The term transmission line stems from the fact that signal energy can be guided from one end to the other with almost zero loss. Although inductive and capacitive elements are present, the signal is not altered as it travels down the line. Let's take a look at an example in ORCAT Signal Explorer. This circuit contains a cascade of 16 elements. The line impedance is 50 ohm given by the square root of 2.5 nanohenry divided by 1 picofarad. We apply a rising edge to the output buffer on the left. There are several probes along the line. The far end is terminated with 50 ohms. Let's simulate the circuit. If we look at the waveforms, we can see that the signals are delayed, which is quite obvious. But even more important is the fact that signal shape does not change. This is somewhat surprising, because there are many inductors and capacitors in the circuit. The LC cascade is just one approach. Of course, simulators have their own models for transmission lines. These models just need two parameters, Z, the impedance and the delay of the line, and usually simulate much faster. The second example compares both approaches. The upper circuit consists of transmission line models, which are available in ORCAT Signal Explorer. These models just need two parameters, the line impedance and the length of the line. The lower circuit is still based on discrete LC cascades. The two circuits are connected through a high impedance resistor on the right. This is just for netlisting purposes, the circuits do not impact each other. The corresponding probes have an index, underscore A and underscore B. The excitation of both circuits is identical. Let's simulate the circuit. As we can see, the results of the simulations match pretty well. Now we're going to change the simulation model of the output buffer. So far we have used the linear model. We will replace it with the typical 3.3 volt model from the Cadence library. This model includes nonlinear switching. Let's simulate again. The rising edges are nonlinear. However, the shape is still identical at any probe. 